Okay, there's already one thing I want to get off my chest right now, and that I Seiko is she was all, she already ranked up as one of my favorite characters, but it's official now. She is my number one favorite character. I can't take this. I can't take this. Oh my god, I can't take this. It's not because of anything, you know. It's just the fact that I really, really feel sorry for her. Plus, she's really adorable. So anyways, we open up from where we kinda left off last episode. Not really left off from where we left off, but where we left off with them, these two. We start off with Tangen and Murakata continuing what, you know, what we saw last episode. Uh, to be honest, they were just conversing with each other. So apparently Murakata wanted, Murakata wanted to start a war to end despair, but Tangen's like, well, uh, I don't think you're gonna do that. Not the war thing, the extinguish despair part with the war. Which on my part, I kind of agree, wouldn't making war cause even more, more despair? But then we go to Makoto and, and then we go to Makoto and Asahina, and they're talking about Gekugahara, and, uh, for one, Nagi said, I wonder if Gekugahara is okay. Well, she's okay, in a way. And Asahina responds with, she's in better shape than us. She's in a wheelchair. Uh-oh. And then, <laughs> Sakakura comes out of nowhere. If I remember correctly, Asahina's forbidden action is being punched? Or being physically hit in some way, or like I think it's just being punched, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. But Sakakura here, being the super high level boxer, that's just a big uh oh. Okay, so Asahina kind of knows how to fight because she tried because she kind of fought off Sakakura even though she didn't hit him, <laughs> nor did she he hit her. But boy, she gave me a heart attack. Oh, and Seiko and the blacksmith guy are fighting. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't really necessarily care. I just hope she kills him because I don't like him. I don't like the blacksmith guy. Or nor do I like like Warwicka just because of what they did. Yeah, specifically what they did to Seiko when she did nothing wrong. Now I really, really, really don't like Warwicka because from a flashback we see that. Rorika used Seiko. She used her. She just cost. She did nothing to be a friend. She just asked, asked for things, asked for help. Always asked for medicine. Oh, I need this. I need that. I really do hate Rorika. And all Seiko wanted to do was help. She was so innocent. She. <sighs> I see. She said it herself because. Seiko didn't eat her sweets. She used her. Well, she did. She didn't exactly say that, but I think that's kind of what I got from it, huh? Oh, that's kind of what I got from it. Or she didn't necessarily treat her as a friend because she didn't eat her sweets. Is that it? Either way, I don't like her. Okay, so we just found out Seiko forbidden action. She can't let someone step in her shadow. And uh. In a horrible situation, she's in a room full of bright lights. Oops. So Tangen and Munikata are, you know, continuing their speech about what they were talking about before, and something very... something uh, caught my eye when they were talking. They mentioned the the, uh, the Kamakura uh, project, which we know what that is from the name. The Kamakura project or Kamakura in general, is very important to this series. Very important. So I guess Tengen apparently knows that Izuru Kamakura is still out there. But if this takes place after Danganronpa 2, which I think it is? It takes place after 2. He should be Hajime right now. But Tengen mentioned that he wanted to keep the project going or not going, but I guess keep something about it. Keep it, keep it up, keep it mentioned, or I don't. Know. Then we go to Hagakure. Who cares about Hagakure? Let's get, let's just continue. Okay, so thanks to uh, Hagakure being a who nobody cares about him guy, blacksmith guy actually found a room. Well, thanks to a bomb almost hitting Hagakure, blacksmith guy 
While in the room that Blacksmith's eye was in, a bookcase fell, and behind it was a Monokuma door, and Blacksmith guy found that. Yeah, that's how you say. And then we go back to Seiko and Roborka, and Roborka's a dick. Now she's on about manipulating Seiko. What did did did? Even though the little thoughts that Roborka are having right now, I hate them. I hate her, and I hate her little thoughts. She's talking about, oh, Seiko is my hero. I trusted her. I don't care. Seiko, kill her. After all, after both of them are done the little thought thing, they both at the same time their thoughts go. When did everything go wrong? Well, everything went wrong when Komeda attacked. All right, so eventually Seiko and Roborka, they actually run across the hallway. Well, not. Well, Roraka does, but Seiko comes across the hallway where uh, Sakakura and Asahina and Nagi are. Alright, so Seiko actually notices a little a scratch on, or something, a bruise, a scratch on Asahina's arm. I guess she tries to go up and help her, but hey, 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 here comes Gekugahara, and should I say, Monika Toa, who they just show us. They just... It's, it's kind of show. Okay, she's still Gakugahara. We still still here as Gakugahara, but they're they're showing they're showing that yes, it's still Monica controlling Gakugahara. We go to Kyoko and the others, and she's just gonna she just said she's gonna investigate uh, Great Gold's body. Anyways, we go back to Tangan and Mudakata. There are a lot of things happening at once, you know. So apparently, Mudakata thought that you know Tangan was oh I'm a part of Remnant. I'm a he, Mudakata thought that Tangan was a remnant of despair because I guess he wanted to protect Izra Kamakura, even though at this point he's Hachime. So, you know. But then again, I don't think no one knows that besides uh, Naegi, Byakuya, and Kyoko. Alright, so Tangan actually, I guess, knew who the killer was and kind of told Mudakata. I think he told him because his forbidden action, he revealed it, it said, tell. What? answer a question with a lie or something like that and then Mudakata got like really angry because of I guess he told him because of the lie and he almost killed Tangan and Tangan took out the bar thing that was in his chest he really took it out he took it out quickly and stabbed Mudakata in the eye but Mudakata had got he had slashed uh, Tangan in the neck and then he kinda Slash Tangan's entire neck, huh? Well, Tangan's kind of dead. So then we see Seiko alone in a hallway. She says to herself that she just tried to save everyone. What we just saw is when, uh, when uh, think uh, when the farmer guy died, she actually tried to heal him with some type of cure when he was poisoned. But I guess it didn't work. And she also, I guess she tried to somewhat helped Chisa in a way? I don't know what she did. But yeah, Seiko's a pure soul and she needs to live. Alright, so time's up and everyone that's in the, um, that's in the game, that's, that's inside the building, are knocked out. And someone's gonna have to, has to kill someone now. Hopefully it's not Seiko because, you know, she's the last person we saw before, you know, everything went to dark. So Seiko was killed. Whoever did it, I want him to die now. I think that'll be the end of this episode. I'm gonna be an emotional wreck for a while. I'll just see you on the next one.